What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. I'm Gosta. I'm here to react to the imminent signing of Stevan Jovetic. Uh, we've been waiting all summer for a striker. We knew this one would likely go down to the wire. Bringing in a good striker, it costs money. You need to be sure of the man that you're bringing in. You want to try and bring in a player like El Arabi back when we got him. Not a, a Nelson Valdez or a Frank O'Hara. I see some people have likened this transfer already to Sinisa Gokic or uh, Marko Pantelic, those of you that are a bit more optimistic. The proof is always in the pudding, of course. The proof will be out there on the pitch. In the end, this deadline day signing, I mean deadline day in a sense that there is the squad registration deadline tonight for the UEFA Europa League. We needed to bring in a striker. It is 33-year-old forward Stevan Jovetic that we're bringing in on a free transfer. Montenegrin international has a rich career, both in terms of the clubs that he's played for, as well as the wealth that he has amassed over his career. This guy's made um, close to 60 million euros worth of transfers. He started his career at Partizan before moving to Fiorentina, where he really made a name for himself. He spent a couple of seasons there before moving to Manchester City. He won titles there. He was loaned to Inter, then Inter bought him for around 13 and a half million. Spent a few seasons in Serie A, had a loan spell in, in Seville, then moved to Monaco. And interestingly enough, he came in at Monaco when Antonio Cordon was still sports director there. So it's a player that Cordon knows well. And from Monaco, he moved to Hertha Berlin on a free transfer. He spent two seasons there amassing 11 goals and four assists in 50 appearances in total. Last season, he started eight games, uh, ladies and gents. He came off the bench nine times and got four goals. That is last season. So also on the international stage, this guy's played 68 times for his country, scored 31 goals. And um, he last played for Montenegro, actually, this June in the European qualifier against Hungary. On the 17th of June, that was. He played 82 minutes in a nil-nil draw. Also the captain of the, the Montenegro side, by the way. So, let's get into this a bit more. The news broke last night. And uh, last night, we were on a high after a 4-0 demolition job against La Mia. And... As soon as the news broke around midnight, 1 a.m. Greek time, you can see everyone starting to get their panties in a twist over this transfer. And I get it. I get it to a certain extent. If you look in particular at some of the players that were on the list for, for striker, Rafa Mir, Luka Jovic, Rafael Boré, Lucas Boyer, even this uh, last minute, Philadelphia Union, Carranza, that we were that we were trying to sign the expectations were very high uh, and i think we were looking to to some really tough targets uh tough targets to bring to olibiagos and and to greece more specifically rafa Mir has been um you know he's been a name that's been on the list since the beginning of the transfer window he stayed at seville until now his move to to valencia broke down uh, there was some talk about milan we were waiting for some um you know, some transfer ping pong there, the Rafa Mir to move to, to Seville, and then that would have left space for perhaps Rafael Borre, who was also linked to Valencia. A lot of players that we've been interested in have been linked with Valencia this summer. In the end, Luka Jovic has gone to, to Milan, who wanted Rafa Mir at some point as well. Rafael Borre has gone to Werder Bremen. Lucas Boyer, that was rumoured, he's, uh, he's made a seven or an eight, eight million euro move to Granada. And Carranza, the latest, uh, the latest target from from the MLS, his club were asking close to 10 million, if you believe the reports. So you know that's a lot of money for a 23, 24 year old player that's never played in Europe. Um, I think you know that the amount of money that they were asking for was was way too much. But but yeah, I can I can get some of the disappointment. I, I see the disappointment, and I have to say. My initial reaction was much the same as a lot of other fans. Uh, yesterday night, I thought, you know, it was very underwhelming when, you know, we've been looking at all, all these, all these 
players with you know, at a good age, um, with with potential. Even Luka Jovic, yeah, he's not uh, he's not in his thirties yet. Maybe Luka Jovic was a little bit unrealistic, but my point is also, you know, one of my first reactions was, wow, this guy Stevan Jovic, he used to be really good. Um, that that's one of the annoying things. One one thing that annoyed me when I when I first heard that we were going in for Jovic, the fact that I used the words used to be really good. Uh, this guy's 33, he's going to be 34 in November. He has an injury history that worries everyone. We don't need another Gary Rodriguez. But this isn't Gary Rodriguez coming from Turkey or the Middle East. This is a player that has spent all his career playing in the top five leagues in Europe and captain of his national team. He's played in Italy, he's played in England, he's played in Spain, he's played in Germany, he's played in France. So let's dive into this a little bit more with a small caveat. This is not a deep dive replacement. This is not replacing the scout report that Ari's going to do on, on Jovetic, which you can watch here, of course, on Gate 7 International. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so that you're informed when the deep dive is out more content being rolled out uh, on Gate 7 International. So if you haven't done that already, make sure hit the like button, subscribe as well, and the bell, and you're good to go. Now, what I want to do is put a few things on the table before um, before you see the proper deep dive from, from Ari. And I'm just giving you my first take, some pros and cons, uh, having thought about this since this was essentially announced out to the public and you know the players in Greece now is going to be going through his medical and so on and so forth the first thing I'll say is that I don't think we've been looking for a 20 goal a season type striker to put it differently Olympiagos isn't looking for a striker to lead the line each and every game day. From what I've seen so far, from Martinez's style, the way we're playing, the goals are coming from the players playing behind and around the striker. So the numbers. Olympiagos has scored 18 goals since the beginning of the season, official games, since the first game against Genk. And guess how many of those goals have come from strikers? Out of those 18 goals that we've scored this season, four come from strikers. An El Arabi penalty against Bansereikos, a brace from El Kabi against Chukaritsky and El Kabi's injury time goal yesterday against, uh, against Lamia. So I think this season we don't need to rely on a Bakambu to be the top scorer in Greece or an El Arabi type profile this season. The goals this season will come from everywhere. I think this is how this team's being built. So we're not looking for that focal point up front as we have been last season. The idea isn't isn't just counter-attacking and having someone spearhead the, the offence and somebody fast like Bakambu was last season. Um, or, you know, it's not about getting the ball out to the wings and crossing it in and looking for the big man or anything like that. This team's set out to play football uh, to build up from the back and, and play fast, one, two-touch football. We saw some of those combinations yesterday from the players um, playing behind uh, El Kabi yesterday in, in particular. And um, we'll get to this point about build-up later on as well. The, the, the second point that I want to make is that I think El Kabi, to focus on him for a moment, El Kabi will score goals for us this season. I like his combativeness, his hustle. Um, he has a nose for getting into the good positions. We saw that from his first goal uh, against uh, Chukaritsky on the rebound. That's what you want from, from your striker. I already expressed on the Lamia post-match that I don't think he's necessarily good enough to be on Olympiacos number one. And that I would like to see a player that could receive the ball, run into space, be a bit more positive and, and better in build-up than El Kabi is. The reality is that I don't think we're going to have this go-to number one striker again this season. I don't expect Jovetic to be coming in and playing 40 games. I expect him to play 15 to 20 games. Don't forget, this is a long season. Playoffs at the end. 
I think Jovetic and El Kabi will share the role up front. The decision on who will start will vary from game to game, according to the needs of each match. And Jovetic is a player that can contribute to build up, unlike El Kabi. Jovetic is technically gifted. He can do the simple things very, very well. He can turn and dribble. He can shoot from distance. He can pass the ball accurately to feet and into space, bring other players into the game. This is something very, very important for, for Diego Martinez and the way Diego Martinez wants his sides to play. If you look at, some again, some of the combinations in, in the final third, yesterday against Lamia, I really think this is the type of player that could slot in nicely with the likes of Biel, Masuras, Fortunis. And not to mention, we seem to be forgetting that we've signed Ola Solbakken as well. We haven't seen him yet. We'll see him after the international break. So look out for that. Uh, Jovetic, again, is not coming in for me. He's not coming in to be the number one striker of this team. He's here to bring another option for us up from. And coming towards the end now, uh, again, one of my initial reactions to this transfer, besides that he used to be good, was that this move doesn't really fit with our transfer policy this season. It's not the kind of move that we would expect Cordon to make. It seems more like a move that the board would have made in the past, like your big name, air airport signing, high profile player. Now, now, let's look at the situation as it stands up front. We have 30 year old um, Ayub Okabi. We've got 36, 37 year old Yusuf Al Arabi. And we would have expected someone young with potential and resale value to come in. We haven't been able to find that. Now, I know some of you are going to say, but Costa, why not just stay with El Kabi and Al Arabi and give a chance to Al Ghassim Bar or even Babis Costulas, one of the stars of our academy who was talked to the press, everyone was talking about him a lot. Um, at the beginning of the season, that he might go to, to pre-season camp, etc. It didn't happen. But when are they going to play, these guys? Bar, Costulas, when are they going to get their chance? Surely they're good enough, Costa, to play against the lesser teams in Greece. You don't need Jovetic to beat them. True. But honestly, what I also see this season at the beginning is that relying on youth uh, has been considered too much of a gamble. Um, too many risks at the beginning of the season. Though, I... I believe Algasim could have played against Chukarovsky, in my opinion, in the second game when it was 3-0. Uh, I would I would like to see those players get a chance. Maybe they will in the cup. Who knows? But back to Jovetic and the issue at hand. What I will say about the transfer policy, coming back to this issue, and, and Cordon's involvement is the following. Jovetic was on the list. I mentioned earlier that Cordon brought him to Monaco. So Jovetic was on the list, but he was further down the list of priorities. This is also a player, I stress again, that is captain of his national team. And what we know about almost all the transfers, or at least the profiles that Cordon and Martinez were looking for this season, they wanted to bring in players that had leadership qualities. Jose Jolebas talked about that in his interview with us. Uh, if you haven't watched that, go and check it out. The team last year in particular, it didn't have, it didn't have, it lacked leadership. The dressing room was not a good place to be. So changing that was a top priority this season. And in that sense, we've brought in another player with leadership qualities. Now, some of you are probably thinking, Costa, you're trying to spin this too much uh, and make it too too positive. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. I'm going to summarise now, guys, ladies and gents. Yes, I was a bit underwhelmed when I first heard about this signing, especially when I compare it to the other names that were linked before. But honestly, I think that looking at this with a bit more calma, uh, I can see some value. But, but of course, when the cookie crumbles, this transfer is all about whether or not Stevin Jovetic can, can get fit in time to contribute early on and whether he can stay fit throughout the season. I said he's not going to be playing 30, 40 games. That's not what I expect at all. This is a player that, that needs to be managed as much as El Kabi as well. 15 to 20 games 
uh, for Stevan Jovetic is what I expect. If he can stay fit, a lot of ifs, I think he can be a very good addition to this team this season. Um, there are no details yet on the deal itself, but a one plus one deal, I think, would definitely be the wisest option. So, Willy Bagos fans, stay positive, trust the process. It's been a fantastic start to the season. Three out of three in Greece, Europa League football secured, and we have the international break ahead that allows more time for players to bed into the team, the players to gel together, more work for the manager and the players to keep building this team. I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. The Scout Report Deep Dive is coming soon from Aris Bulubasi, so look out for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And also, guys, if you fancy it, go and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash gate7, the number gate7 international, patreon.com slash gate7 international. There's more content there. Find out about how you can also join our WhatsApp group help to keep growing this red and white community around the world it really helps when you when you hit the like button as well the more we grow uh the more fun this is thanks very much for watching leave your comments as well uh you agree with me you disagree with me what do you think about this transfer did i change your mind on anything i'm really interested leave a comment at the bottom and thanks very much again for watching this is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. See you next time.